Well, folks, there's a clip from a podcast called Whatever. It's gone completely viral online. It's a young woman saying the word like about one million times. I, I want to analyze this, not just because she says like a lot, but actually, believe it or not, buried under all the like is something of value. I mean, it's like deep under it. You got to really un unbury it. But there's something kind of interesting happening. Okay, so this Whatever podcast is essentially a host sitting with a bunch of attractive young women and talking about everything from sex to dating. And the clips are almost tragic. They're almost tragic because what you see is people who don't understand how the world is supposed to work. They don't understand the purpose of things. And so they are just in a state of constant confusion. They don't. Okay. So take, for example, this clip that has now gone viral. It is a woman storming out off the what whatever podcast because a male guest says he will not have sex with a transsexual woman. He will not have sex with a trans woman. And this apparently is sexist because, of course, trans women are women. We've been told again that sex is completely to be disconnected from reproduction. So if a woman who is not a woman says she is a woman, meaning a dude says he is a lady, you are supposed to just believe that and then have sex with that. But now, and, and, you, and you won't, and you, and you say, well, hold on, I, I'm, I'm straight. I'm not going to do that. They say, well, yes, but that's, that doesn't matter, you see. That, whether you're straight, that's all a spectrum, as Andrew Tate says. It's all a spectrum. It doesn't even matter. Because bottom line is, what you are doing, it's just, it's just sex, man. What's the big deal? So here's this clip. It's an amazing clip. Case, would you rather smash the hottest trans woman in the world or the <laughs> oldest woman in the world? Honestly, bro, like old, oldest. the oldest woman in the world, because then I wouldn't be gay. <laughs> what? <laughs> you really just want me to uh, just uh, rip you uh, a uh, new uh, one. I swear uh, to God. Are you like... Uh, uh, what? Chase, yeah. how dare you be transphobic? Yes, actually, what the f do you mean? Yes, that was so necessary. Because if I had sex with a trans woman, I'd be having sex with a biological man, and I don't want to do that. The question is, that's not what you said, though. That's fine. Because I'd be say. gay if I had sex that's with a biological gay. man. That's not gay. That's and gay. I don't care if you're doing this for like whatever, but like shut the f up. Actually, I'm, I'm doing you look it like you have a little bit of respect. Why don't, his why don't, history, that's too far. Why don't why don't you make me shut the up? Because I have an opinion that differs from yours. She's right. I mean, that's really hateful, she's bro. She's not. She's not. It would technically be homosexual. A trans woman is a biological man. Sue me. Okay. And of course, the women who are walking out have been told that that's not the case. They've been told that a biological man who has a bunch of surgeries to mimic the looks of a, of a biological woman is in fact a biological woman. Now, the only way that you can come to that conclusion is if what you believe is that sex and reproduction have nothing to do with one another, right? That the, the only sexual, the only female organs that matter are not the reproductive organs, which are the ones that, by the way, typically define what is female from what is male. The way that we define a female is, in fact, an egg-producing person, right? That is the way, typically, biologically, like a large, a large reproductive cell-producing person would be a female. That is biologically how you define this thing. But we've removed that because sex and reproduction are now completely separate. And so you end up with this bizarre spectacle of actual biological women getting angry at a man for saying he does not want to have sex with a man who has a bunch of surgeries to look more like a woman. Because that's what a woman is. That's what, once you disconnect sex from reproduction, what you end up with is the fetishistic. The fetishistic objectification of women. The imitation of female body parts is now the same as a female. There is no difference. They are the same. That's what you end up with. The destruction of the distinction between the sexes. And guess who that hurts? Ladies. Predominantly you. Well, that girl says like an awful lot, but here's something you will like. Mm -hmm. It's Legacy Box. Let me just tell you something about Legacy Box. Legacy Box is the best gift you can get for yourself or anybody else. Why? Well, what they do is they take all of that old memorabilia you got in your garage, right? all the old family photos that are just kind of fading away, all of the old tapes that you got, VHS, you don't have a VCR anymore. You got all these film reels, all this stuff. You send that into Legacy Box. They digitize it. They keep it for you forever. And this means that you have access to it for like the rest of your life. Your family's special moments, if they were captured on analog media like film reels or tapes, those are in danger. They do degrade over time. Preserve your family's history with Legacy Box. Legacy Box is a simple and safe way to digitize your treasured videotapes, film reels, and photos. Everything is professionally digitized right here in the United States. Just send in your old media. Their team will send everything back in a digital format so you can share it on social media for your friends and family. Over 1 million families have trusted Legacy Box to preserve their memories. So should you. I did it for my own parents. I've done it for myself. It is great. Legacy Box is offering my listeners an incredible nine buck tape offer that's over 60% off. Visit LegacyBox.com slash Shapiro. Shop $9 tape and film transfers. There's a limited quantity available. They are selling fast. That's LegacyBox.com slash Shapiro. There's never been a better time to convert your entire collection.
Well, folks, when you look at the state of the world, it's hard to get sleep, but you do need to sleep. And this is why you need a mattress personalized for you. So very often when it's time to shop for a new mattress, you're like, oh, let's head on over to the big box mattress store. And then you go over there and you just lie down on a mattress for like seven seconds. Like, oh, this is probably fine. And then you sleep on that thing for the next 10 years. Why would you do that? Get a mattress that is made just for you with Helix. Helix is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. The Helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses, including a collection of luxury models, a mattress for big and tall sleepers, even a mattress made just for kids. I've had my Helix sleep mattress for literally years. It's so good that I got one as a present for my parents, got one for actually two of my sisters. Go check out Helix right now. Helix has a sleep quiz. It matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. I took the Helix sleep quiz, got a firm but breathable mattress because that's what I needed. Helix will do the same for you. Go to Helix right now, helixsleep.com slash Ben. Right now, they're offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. It's their best offer yet. Hurry on over to helixsleep.com slash Ben with Helix Better Sleep. Starts right now. Get your mattress personalized. Get it the way you like it, helixsleep.com slash Ben for up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Yeah, but that's not the only confusion that arises when you get rid of the teleology of male-female relationships. Take, for example, this, this woman, this young woman. So there's a young woman, again, on this whatever podcast, and this clip went uber viral, mainly because at least 70% of this young woman's vocabulary is the word like. Here we go. I think, like, the biggest thing that, like, annoys me in, like, the whole dating world is, like, talking stages. Like, that's so annoying. Like, the whole, like... And just, like, the inconsistency in them. Like, I literally, like, hate that, like, so much. But I think that's, like, my biggest thing. It's just, like... What, what specifically? Just, like, the fact of just, like, you, like... I don't know how to word this. Like, in, like, talking stages, and it's just, like, you're, like, labeled that, and it's, like, people, like, are considered, like, you can't, like... You're just, like, confused, and, like, most of the time, like, the girl get like, gets, like, attached or something, and they, like, see it like it's going to lead to a relationship, and it's always not. And it's just, like that's like my biggest thing is like I just hate the whole like how like talking stages are so like normalized like traditional dating does not exist in this generation okay so a couple things one she uses the word like a lot now the reason I assume that she's using the word like a lot there's only two reasons one is because normally it comp comprises an extraordinary extent of her vocabulary which is plausible unfortunately there are a lot of people in the world who use like a lot or alternatively it's a nervous tick like is a nervous tick in this clip the reason that she's nervous in this clip is because she is trying to articulate a human instinct that you are no longer allowed to articulate. That human instinct is that sex is supposed to be combined with commitment. Sex is supposed to be combined with commitment, and commitment is supposed to be combined with marriage, and marriage is supposed to be combined with childbearing. I know these are, these are really difficult things, except for literally all of human history, but in the last five minutes, we decided we're not allowed to say this anymore. So what exactly is she talking about? I will try to decode this. Let's, let's talk about um, that particular clip. So she's talking about Talking stages. What the hell is a talking stage? So I'll be honest, this is not of my generation. This is of the generation Z, it's the generation below me. So what exactly is a talking stage? Apparently a talking stage is the beginning of the dating process or the not dating process in which you are just talking a lot with somebody and it's very awkward because you don't know the purpose of the talking. That's what she's talking about. She is saying that that stage is really awkward. And apparently that can include anything from casual hookups and sex to you just go to coffee and you, don't, you haven't defined the relationship. You haven't defined the relationship. She says that's really awkward for her. You know why talking stages have become a thing? Because you've obliterated the purpose of male-female relationships. That would be why. That would be why. Because it used to be that, I'll tell you what the talking stage looked like in my relationship with my wife. Here was the talking stage. Would you like to go on a date? That was the talking stage. Then it was over. There were no more talking stages. You want to know why? Because we went in, both my wife and I, with the purpose of getting married and then having children. That was the purpose. And so everything was constructed around that. It was constructed around the end goal. It was constructed around the teleological endpoint of what the relationship would be. And thank God we are happily married for almost 15 years. We have our fourth child on the way. By the way, a huge majority of people globally who have children and are happily married will tell you the same thing. You have to start with the end point, but we've destroyed the end point. And so what you end up with is talking stages where are we having sex or are we not having sex? Are we supposed to make out or are we not supposed to make out? Do I even like you? Okay, so here is the way that it used to work in traditional society and still does in most traditional societies. Meet a woman, date a woman, marry a woman, have sex with a woman, have children with the woman. That, with the woman. That, that, that is the actual, those are the stages. So the talking stage is like the very beginning because you're, you're talking about whether you wish to pursue the relationship or not. There is no confusion. You do not have sex before, during the talking stage because that would be mixing up stage like four with stage one. 
And the reason that stage four is not stage one is because the whole purpose of the relationship is to develop the commitment that is necessary in order to decide whether the two of you wish to provide a home for a child that you produce together. That was the entire purpose. You destroy that purpose. And what you end up with is a woman who says like a lot while being very confused and frustrated and upset that she doesn't know what to expect from men. Well, why should she know what to expect from men? Men even don't, don't know what they expect because all the expectations in our society have been drowned in a bathtub. They've been destroyed. So you end up with this sort of chaos. I feel bad for her. I feel bad for a lot of young women and young men because they've been brought into a world in which the purpose that God laid out for them, and I believe it was God, but you can say it was evolutionary biology if it makes it feel you any better. The, the purpose of your being has been removed from you. And thus, you are left in a stage of confusion. Talk, talk, uh, you'll have talking stages, like lots of talking stages, like, like so many like talking stages. And, and they really, of course they bother you because there's no purpose to the talking stage. The talking stage is awkward only insofar as you don't know what it's designed to do. She's saying, I want clarity in my relationship. That's what she's actually saying. I want clarity in relationships. You know how you have clarity in relationships? When you go into the relationship seeking clarity, that's how. But we destroyed that because the normal endpoint of the relationship is something that is apparently completely subjective and maybe scorned, maybe frowned upon. You can see this happening, by the way, on television. If you watch any movie from the 1940s, the way that this works is man meets woman, they date, they fall in love. And then again, the purpose is get married and have kids. Now we've completely screwed this up. Now every TV show is you go out with, with somebody you're at a bar, you have sex with them, and then you have to decide the next morning whether you even like them. And then you wonder why people are confused, why men don't know the difference between quote-unquote toxic masculinity and regular masculinity, and women don't know the difference between quote-unquote promiscuity and freedom. You want to know why? That is why. Get rid of the teleology, and this is where you end up. All righty, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be getting into riots in France. We'll be getting into... The question of who actually bombed the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. If you're not a member, become a member. Use code Shapiro. Check out for two months free on all annual plans. Click the link in the description and join us.